Hello, this is Ben Russell from Tradeway. Today is a fun opportunity for myself and David Verbugen, who just joined us, to be able to have a great topical workshop with you. Now, if you haven't been with us or you don't really understand what a topical is, we chose to focus on an area and dive a little deeper and kind of tell you what the trade philosophies are, how we approach this specific topic. So we try to find relevant topics to be able to talk with you, our friends, about when it comes to the trade philosophies. Because if you haven't figured it out yet, we think a little differently about this thing called trading. So, David, it's great to be on with you. I'm looking forward to today. Um, our friends are going to be able to communicate with us as well. Can you, my friend, just give them a little bit of an idea about what do they do to be able to engage with us during this topical? Absolutely, Ben. Hey, guys, if you have any questions for us, and you very well might as we talk about the difference between long-term investing and short-term trading, if you have any questions for us, throw those in the Q&A for us. We'd love to answer those questions for you. If there's a great question that would benefit everyone, I'll just stop Ben and say, hey, Ben, we've got a good question. You might want to tackle this one. Um, but I can also type uh, answers back to you as well. We also have the chat box. You know, if you just want to say hello, for example, hello from Portland, Oregon. That's me. And uh, Ben, I know you're joining us from just outside of Houston. So tell us where you're from. Tell us um, hello. And uh, if you have anything else you want to chat about, you know, that's what the chat box is for. Excellent. Well, thank you, David. I, I sincerely appreciate having you on board to be able to help with those questions. It, it makes a difference because one of the things you're going to discover about Tradeway is that we want to teach you. It's not about just us doing everything for you. There's an education component to everything that we do. And yet, you know, when it comes to this long-term investing thing, it's not as easy as it sounds. So what today's topical is going to be all about, let's start looking. How is the short-term trading? Many of you are familiar with, with Tradeway already. You're already in our short-term trading programs. But what many of you don't get understand or know is how does long-term trading, long-term investing differ, and what can we do at Tradeway to maybe assist you in, you know, a pretty important part of all of our lives. All right, so David, as we get started today, my friend, I, I think it's really important. This might seem a little bit like a, an obvious statement, but anytime that I'm trading short-term, there's a few things I need to know. Anytime I'm long-term investing, there's a few things that I need to know. Okay, well, then what are those things? Well, I need to know when to buy. I need to know when to sell. And I need to know when to hold. Okay, leading question. Friends out there, get that chat window. What is the one common thing that you see between all of these specific things that you need to know? What is the one common term that you're seeing called out on all the steps? I need to know when to buy. I need to know when to sell. I need to know when to hold. I almost feel like there's a Kenny Rogers song in the background there somewhere, but it's about the when, the when, and the big difference between short-term and long-term is the when. So here, friends, I'm going to ask you another leading question. What do you think of when I pull up this nice little graphic? What's the term that you think of when I pull up this, this clock? It's time. It's time. So the big factor, when you start thinking about time, that's more like the daily. Like the quick time is the daily. And I'm looking at candlesticks. And if you've been with Tradeway, you know what I'm talking about. Candlesticks are just a reflection of price action over time compared to price action from previous time periods. And these candles represent a time frame that I select. So when I go to select the time and I'm looking at trading, I'm usually looking at the daily. I'm usually looking at a daily setup to allow me as a trader to start to make decisions about when to buy, when to hold, and when to sell. Now, what about when I start thinking about investing? Well, investing is more like longer term. All right, I'm not necessarily just on a daily. I'm looking at the calendar and representing several time frames coming together for me to be able to start to make decisions. So I'm going to tell you that the candlestick shifts. The candlestick you and I start to use when we're investing is a weekly candle, 
We change our investing horizons to weekly candles to begin to make those same decisions, when to buy, when to hold, and when to sell. The technicals of those candles can inform our decisions not only for short-term trading when using the daily, but for long-term investing by using the weekly. You see how they can be different and yet at the same time similar. The same questions and yet the tools that I'm using to get it are very similar, but the conclusions I make based on the selection of that tool can be very different. Let me show you a little bit more. All right, so here's some short-term basics. This is not gonna be new to any of you who have been a part of the Tradeway, excuse me, the Tradeway system. Entries and exits on short-term trading Again, that daily candle is where we want to start making our decisions, and it's all about support and resistance. You all, most of you have been to our step one or our introductory seminars, and from the very first time you've heard anything at Tradeway, we want you to go draw lines. Where's your support? Where's your resistance? What time frame? Usually the daily. You guys didn't even realize you were doing it. You were coming at it from a trader's mindset. And then if you've been to our workshop series, you know we want you to be triggered or enter or exit trades based on lower time frames. So you can go in and change your candle to a 15 to a 30 minute candle and you can begin to see patterns of support and resistance on lower time frames, higher highs, higher lows, it should seem familiar to you. We often use those to trigger us into a trade. Just basics, this is what we do with trading. Now, the tools that we use in short term are a little different. If we were approaching a short term trade, we're pretty much going to be doing things like options. We want the leverage of options. We could also use spreads. Spreads is a great way to get even better leverage than just straight options. Trading size is another area where I'm going to highlight some differences between short term and long term. Trade size. If you've been with us for any period of time, and if you've been under Jared Russell specifically, you know Jared. Jared's like, you got to control your trade size. So a 5 to 10% of your trading account, and that's all the more that we would suggest that you would want to put into these trades to control your risk. And then when we get back to the, uh, the management side of things, normally you're going to have to be a little bit more agile. You're going to have to be a little bit more reactive, if you will, and be willing to get out of your trades faster because usually these shorter term trades are going to be much more impacted by moves in the market. Okay, so here's the key. Shorter term trades are often faster. They're often more decisive and they are often much more work than longer term positions. So here's some things to realize. These are the, the rules that David has shown us from step one, from time immemorial. I mean, for over a decade, these rules have not changed. I need to be able to control my greed by leveraging things like stop rules. What do I mean by stop rules? Well, I need to know when I'm going to get in. Oh, I think we talked about that earlier. I need to know when I'm getting in, and I need to know when I'm getting out. And these rules haven't changed since we started Tradeway. We're going to leverage specific stocks and options. I'm going to wait for an entry trigger to get in. I'm not going to trade over earnings. That's another big issue, by the way. That's a very big difference between short-term trading and long-term. And before I'm going to do the trade, what am I going to ask myself? I think you all can probably repeat it with me. Is this pattern predictable, repeatable, and reliable? I mean... I, I want you to just kind of wake up in the middle of the night. When you're a trader, predictable, repeatable, reliable, right? It's, that's what you got to do when you're thinking about these short-term trades. And it's the huge part of the tradeway system, predictable, repeatable, reliable patterns. Okay, so that's short-term trading. And I went through that quickly because that should be review for just about everybody on this call. Now, I want to take it a little slower on this next part. David, we're, we're going to start now comparing the things I just told you about short term. Let's start thinking about this from a long term perspective. Anybody interested now that most of you know short term, right? anybody out there interested in knowing how we can start to think differently for long term, type it in the chat window. Tell me if you're excited about this next phase. Give me some feedback. Is this all right? All right. Getting some yeses there. Good deal. Thank you. 
What about some thumbs up? I mean, you guys want me to go on or should we just end the webinar now? I think we, no, I'm not going to end the webinar now. That was all introduction. Let's get on to it, David. All right, so long-term basics. Entries and exits, not on the daily candles. Man, we, we really want to zoom out on the time. We want those weekly candles to begin to be how we make decisions. Well, just like short-term trading, however, I am going to be looking at those candles and areas of resistance and support to begin to make my decisions. But the difference is the candle time frame. What's the big difference? It's the win. And the win for long-term becomes weekly. Oh, okay. So if I'm looking to trigger myself into short-term trades, what might trigger me into a long-term investment? I'm going to go look at the weekly candles, support and resistance, and then I'm going to look at daily candles to be my trigger into investments. And I'm going to utilize a very different tool set. I'm not really going to be doing short-term options. I'm not going to be doing spreads. I'm going to primarily for investing be focusing on long-term options. These things that we talk about called LEAPS, L-E-A-P-S, those long-term options can become very powerful as a part of a long-term investing platform and straight stock positions. I really don't want to be affected by, anybody know? Long-term investing, as opposed to trading, there's something in short-term trades that I always have to be familiar with and keep in my mindset. It's the time value of those assets that I've purchased. You see, friends, with long-term investing, I don't want the value of what I'm in to decay over time. I want it to increase over time. So I really got to take that factor out. That affects the tools that I use coming into my investment portfolio for the longer-term trades. Okay, so what about sizes of positions? If I'm in a longer term position, I'm going to be scaling in and scaling out of positions. If you don't know what scaling is, we also can call it pyramiding. Pyramiding is a concept of controlling risk and risk size. And what we would suggest is, is that you probably want to be diversified in your portfolio to where you've got investments that are no more than five to potentially as high as 20% of your portfolio, depending on how you're managing it. So trade position size is a, is a part of trading and it's investing. All right, this next one, be willing to let the market move more. Don't get scared out on just a single daily candle, for example. Longer term is slower. It's less apt to react quickly. Now, there are a few caveats to that that I'm going to call out. When might you consider being a little more reactive? When might you consider being less invested is a huge part of how we approach long-term investing at Tradeway. When world news has shifted, that's a great time for you to get less invested. When the weekly trends, those candlesticks, start to turn bearish in their pattern, and the moving averages start to cross. That's a great time for you to get defensive. And then here's another one that's going to be very germane to where we are today. The monetary policy of the United States has a huge part to do with your long-term investing perspectives. And when you find the Fed is accommodative, that's a great time to be invested. But when you see the Fed is starting to get hawkish and pulling back on monetary accomplishments or accommodations, that is not a, that's not a time where you want to be overly bullish because that's usually when we start to see some changes in these longer term trends that you and I know so well in the market as traders. So here's some long term investing rules. And this is probably the first time many of you have ever seen a slide like this from Tradeway. Why? Because this is actually a part of a program that we call AMPT. A-M-P-T. It's our long term investing program. And I'll be telling you more about that. But I just want to give you some overview of some of the ways that we, leveraging AMP and the AMP methodologies, begin to do investing a little differently. Now, David, I have to give a caveat here. This is just part of our rule sets. Right? I'm, I'm giving a preview for our friends out there in this topical so you can begin to see how to think differently about investing versus trading. Just recognize this is not the full list. All right. So let's keep going. 
I need a directive established with how to exit an investment before I enter it. There's a lot in that statement, David, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to unpack that today, but you need to have a methodology. When is it that I'm going to enter an investment? What's the conditions upon which I'm going to enter? And what's the conditions on which I'm going to exit? And usually it's going to be about time. Usually it's going to be about things like weekly candles. It's going to be about key moving averages on the weekly. I need to have my own rules established. And what you'll find is, is for example, with the AMP program, when our investment advisors make a decision to enter, we actually create that trade plan. We create that investment methodology. What is it that's going to cause us to decide to take a stop out? And we do that in advance so that we have a directive established, which rule number two comes into play. I'm doing this because I need to not get scared out of the market. I need to not just be fearful because the market will do what the market's going to do. And I just don't want to get scared out of my long-term positions unless I can see my parameters around number one have changed. David, David Mitchell, talks about rule number three is that he's leveraging AMPED alerts. As a part of our AMP services, we actually describe what, why, and how we are making the decisions that we are. What does that longer-term horizon look for? us as traders, us as investment people, as we blend those two skill sets together, what and how and why are we making the decisions that we're making? So David's calling out our amped friends get these really cogent, really long-term focused alerts from us. Why and how are we making the decisions that we make? This is pretty hard, David. I'm just telling you, as a guy that's been doing this now for over a decade, Knowing what news to pay attention to from a long-term perspective and what news to ignore is not as easy as it sounds. David Mitchell continues on with his rules that rule number one and three keep him from responding to fear. Fear is a big part of investing. We can't just jump out at every single news item. We need to have some discretion, and that's where the number one comes into play. Number one keeps us in trades or investments longer. Number three is going to help us to know when maybe we need to jump out. And number four is all about controlling our fear and leveraging our mentality so that we don't just jump out at every news item. Number five, how do I measure my success? Well, long-term is by definition long-term. So start thinking about your investment portfolios over periods of time that are in the year timeframes, not just in months. David will also share how we leverage ETFs extensively for long-term investing. That's different than short-term trading. An ETF doesn't have some of the things that we need. It doesn't have a, a profit and loss statement. It doesn't have a balance sheet. It doesn't have a PE ratio, all things that are important in short-term trading. ETFs are a great way to have diversified investment options for your long-term portfolios. And David, you and I, we get to do this a lot. Do we leverage just a few ETFs in the AMP portfolios? We do. We, we love the ETFs. They're, they're a whole lot better than mutual funds for a whole number of reasons. Um, we can go into that more at, at another time, if, unless you want to now. But um, ETFs, they're bare bones. They're cheaper. You can get out of them when you want to. Well, so we go into this, but you know, David, let's let's give our friends a little bit of information as to why. I, I think it's a great point, by the way. I didn't plan to cover it, but that's a rabbit trail that I think is worth following. Let's do why it. might our friends not want to be invested in mutual funds? Uh, yeah, so I think look at Friday, right? This last Friday was a perfect example. If you look at the candlestick of what happened on Friday, the, the overall market, the S&P dropped about 140 points. That's huge. Now, I got an alert on my phone when it had dropped about 60 points or so. If I had been in mutual funds and I had thought, you know what? I think it's going to be a bad day. Let's go ahead and get out. It would not have let me get out right then and there. It would have forced me to wait until the end of the day. So another 80 points of dropping before <laughs> I could get out. Ouch. Yeah. With an ETF, though, I can just get out. I mean, it trades just like stocks. You can get in, you can get out when you want. With a mutual fund, you can only do so at the end of the day. So that makes it very challenging. 
All right. So that, that would be another thing that for us, there, there is some differences. Now, that's not necessarily how short term and long term are different. But I, I want you to understand our philosophy is we do not believe mutual funds are a good investment for somebody who has knowledge of how to trade. So we would highly suggest that you can get diversification out and through these instruments known as ETFs. And that's not necessarily a topic for why today, but it is an absolute reason why you may want to have our help in being able to do long-term investing, which we'll be talking about through this through the rest of this presentation. All right, so David, let's like jump back in. That was a great rabbit trail. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate that because mm -hmm. that's normally something that's not clear or understood by our friends is that there are some dangers in just consuming the products that are available out there without understanding. And, and to me, mutual funds is one of them. That's, that's a big deal. So good rabbit trail, my friend. All right, number seven, I want to get leveraged through understanding. Now, you and I, we talk about leverage in terms of what it is that we do in trading, and typically that is the tool that we bring into the market, things like options or spreads, they give us leverage, but knowledge is leverage too. So what am I looking to do here? I want to leverage my knowledge of the S&P 500, because if I look back in history, I can actually understand that there are cycles in the longer term of the markets where as a trader, I can actually start to make some decisions about when I want to be invested and when I don't. So think about those weekly candles again. If I'm leveraging my knowledge, I'm giving myself better odds of being in the market when it makes sense and it's more likely going to be bullish. And I'm trying to make the decisions about when is it likely going to be bearish and get more defensive in those time frames. So I'm going to leverage my knowledge, not just the tools when it comes to long-term investing. All right, number eight, I attempt to enter the market at, this is very different, David. When we talk about trading, we're like, get a, as perfect a buy point as what you can. Get, get a great buy point on those trades. Investments, no, it's more about confirmation. I'm trying to get, in David's words, a decent buy point. I'm trying to buy in for these longer term trends when I can see some confirmation. And I am not trying to catch the bottoms. And I'm not trying to catch the tops. And I will often call this low-carb investing. Low-carb investing? What do you mean by that, Ben? Well, I, I just shared this with someone yesterday. And like, oh, that makes so much sense. I'm a little older now, David. I can't necessarily have those hamburgers that I used to have when I was in my 20s. And I can't eat like I did when I was in my 20s. Anybody ever tried to eat a low carb hamburger? You don't eat the buns. You go, you go to Red Robin and you get that really nice juicy patty and say, hey, put it on a lettuce wrap. Right? I'm, I'm not gonna eat the top bun. I'm not gonna eat the bottom bun. And if you think about how stocks move, there's a slushy area at the bottom. That's the bottom, that's the bottom bun. I don't want to eat the bottom bun. I just want the big, juicy, meaty patty and the good stuff in the middle. And when I start to get to the area where I think things can start to turn, that's the top bun. And I'm not interested in eating the top bun either. So low carb investing, if you will, is all about having a pretty decent buy point, having a pretty decent sell point that prevents you from being in those really huge moves that can destroy your portfolio. So is a long-term trend intact? What cycle are we in is a huge part of the question you need to be thinking about in the back of your mind when you are investing. Make some sense? What questions do we have out there, David? Any, any comments on this one? Uh, the board is clear at the moment. So guys, if you have any questions about what we're talking about, feel free to use that Q&A uh, box to uh, put in your questions. Excellent. Well, let's keep going here, sir. A topical is also meant to be fast. So we'll keep going. You guys can always watch this recording. You can slow me down. If I'm talking too fast, you can reduce the speed on the playback if you want to, and you can pause me and reverse me. Take some notes along the way. Um, let's get on to this next section, because I think that this is where we can really start to understand more of the differences between trading and investing. We are aligning to the cycles in the market. The difference is the timeframes, right? 
But you have to recognize there is this constant struggle, whether you're trading or investing, there's a constant struggle between the bulls and the bears. The pricing action, the moves up versus the moves down. But you got to recognize that in general, markets like to move up. They like to move up. The Fed, the economy, everything likes it when stuff is going up. Which means, David, the bulls are usually in control. I mean, so you have to have a bias one way or the other. Usually it's the bulls that are in control. That's just human nature. But we have to look at God's wisdom. And, and God's cycles that he creates in everything and understand that the economy is just like that. It has cycles. It is a created instrument because it's created around human beings. And we have cycles. And, and the cycles of the market are just as a part of how that market functions. So we have to recognize that while the markets like to move up, there are periods of decline. There's there's times in which the market has to rest. There's times in which the market has to decrease before it can then begin to increase again. And it's all healthy. It's a part of natural creation. So here's where it comes into play. We want you to align your trades with those shorter term cycles. Looking at the daily charts, we want you to align your investing with those longer term cycles, those weekly charts. So Tradeway, we're going to suggest that you approach the market with the knowledge of those cycles throughout history to begin to understand why what your traditional financial investment advisor would tell you, namely buy and hold, is probably not a good idea. For us at Tradeway, we think like traders, and then we apply our trading philosophies into our investment methodology, and we genuinely believe that buy and hold can be devastating, devastating to your long-term portfolio. It can be devastating. And I want to show you kind of why. Here, here's a chart, right? And, and David, this is a chart of the S&P. It's back in January. We can just see how we got this really clear trend. I mean, that blue area just shows the trend really clearly. I mean, I, it's up. It's up over time. That's the sort of thing that when we're looking for long-term investments, man, that's the kind of market we want. But what happens when it breaks the trend? Well, there's a cycle of rest there. And if I'm not willing to change up my portfolio and I can begin to see that there's long-term indicators that this is probably not going to go back up, I might need to start thinking differently about how to preserve my capital. All right. So let's look at the next chart and let's start to think about why is buy and hold so dangerous? And David, I love this chart. I, this is from LPL. It's a, you know an investment services. I, I pulled this right off the, their, their website, but I love the data that they encapsulate here. So David, I'm gonna take a couple minutes. I wanna to explain to our friends what this chart is and how they can begin to interpret this to understand why buying and hold is so dangerous. Over here, this is a, a metric that starts to show over time what are the bear markets throughout history, all right? So what are the bear markets? When did they happen? How long did the bear last? How big of a decline did we see in the bear market? And then this last one, David, oh, this one's key. How long did it take to get back to even? All right, so this is an amazing amount of data in just one chart. You can see we start with the 50s and we go up to the 2020s, all right? So we've got... 75 years of history sitting right here in front of us. So over 75 years, you can see that there's been significant declines in the market. Look at the declines, 21, 28, 40, oh, 48%, 27, 19, 49, 56% declines. <gasps> Oh, that doesn't sound very smart. And take a look at that 56% decline. David, it took 17 months of declining. At what point do you think maybe looking at a weekly candlestick pattern, I might have figured out I needed to do something differently? Wouldn't have taken me 17 months to figure it out. But I got to be willing to look at the data a little differently. Huh. Okay, so this, this, is, this is the part, David. I just I really want people to get it. So 17 months of decline. You would have figured out somewhere along the way, leverage weekly candles, it can help you. And a 49% is the, our 49 months is what it took to get back to even. 
Wow. So 17 months plus 49 months, I'm looking at 66 months of decline in recovery. That's years, David. Mm -hmm. Years. Does it make sense to be a buy and holder and lose years of time on your investment portfolio? It doesn't to me. That just doesn't make sense. So why not think a little bit more like a trader when it comes to your investing? Leverage these things, these weekly candlesticks, and let's start to do something a little different than just buy and hold. Hey, Ben, I'd like to point something else out too, if I can. Um, you look at the start of the year 2000, and that's the start of that dot-com crash bubble, right? And uh, the length of that was 31 months, and then it took 56 months to recover. What's not easy to see on this chart here is that at 56 months, when that, once that has fully recovered, it was just in time for the next recession. Oh. And then we launch into the real estate um, you know, crash, the, the great recession, I guess they call it. Um, and then down 17 months, and then another 49 months to recover. What does that translate to? That translates to from the year 2000, we finally broke even and actually started moving up above that line in the year 2013. It was 13 years of essentially flat once you add in the two recessions. And after 13 years, we finally broke higher than the year 2000. That's kind of mind blowing. So you're underscoring the big factor. It's about time. And, and if you think through this, David, the thing that we can't replace, it's time. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, as a gentleman who's trying desperately to expose a different way of thinking, I, I need you to recognize you can't buy back time when it comes to your investments. If, if you've lost 50% of your portfolio, it's going to take time for you to recover. So maybe you start thinking about time as part of your asset investment choices. You're trying to preserve the amount of time that it's going to take for you to be able to build up your nest egg. And, to, and that's a huge part of what we do in our program called AMPT, A-M-P-T. It is. It's, we are focused on trying to help you to, to not have to go through these huge market declines, to not have to take five, six, seven, 10, 15, 13 years to recover. You can't buy back that time. All right. So let's look at why and how we do some of what we do. David, I think we use scripture just a little bit at Tradeway to kind of inform how we do things. What do you think? Is scripture kind of important to us? Absolutely. We love using scripture because why not? I mean, it's God's words to us and there's a lot of wisdom in there. So let's do it. Let's use it. All right. So let's look at um, um, this first verse. This is James. Can you read James chapter 4, thir um, 13 and 14 for me, please? Yes. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas yet, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Okay, so I think that word time might have come up just a little bit in that passage. So friends, I want you to recognize time. Time is short. Life is unpredictable. And, and because of that unpredictability, because time is short, I really think we need to have a much more engaged mindset when it comes to the assets that God has given to us. It's not the buy and hold and pray mentality, in my opinion, that honors the things that God has given to you and your family. If you're just expecting someone else who has a buy and hold mentality to protect you through these things, it can be a very dangerous mindset. Life is short. Life is unpredictable. I think we need to do things in a different way, and we need to understand that life is short. Let's, let's leverage our time as an asset. Let's not spend 13 years trying to recover. All right, this next one, David, this is Ecclesiastes. Our friends might be familiar with this one, but let's read Ecclesiastes. Yeah. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. So did you catch that? Invest in seven or eight different categories, different areas. This is diversification straight from scripture. And it's a huge part, David, of how we at the AMPT program leverage this concept of diversification. 
we have seven major categories and an eighth one that's a little special that we'll tell you about it at, at an intro. I mean, we won't take time on it today, but we see straight from scripture the need for us to be diversified across sections of the economy because we do not know what God is going to do. We do not know what the future holds, so we need to be prepared with wisdom straight from Scripture so that when the unexpected happens, it doesn't destroy our entire portfolio. If you're invested entirely in the tech sector, you're probably not doing too well this year. Just one example. All right, so how can we help? David, this is where I think the rubber meets the road. And again, I'm moving quickly on purpose because I want this to be a topical that's very, very focused. But how is it that Tradeway can help you with your long-term investments? Well, we have a program called AMP. I've mentioned it a few times, but this is the first time I'm going to tell you what it means. Assisted Managed Portfolios by Tradeway. A-M-P-T is all about us at Tradeway helping you with your long-term money, helping you to create diversified portfolios and leveraging the experience that we have at Tradeway. So that's the what. The what and how is it that we can help you with your long-term investing? The what? The answer is AMPT. AMPT is how our company is choosing to help you with answering the questions of what. What we want you to do is, is to invest in a very different way. And the program is called AMPT. We make our services biblically sound, safer, and click button simple. You're going to hear that if you come to any of our presentations. That is our, our tagline. Our services, the things we do for you, makes this thing called investing biblically sound. We leverage biblical wisdom, the things like Ecclesiastes, to be able to help us to figure out how to do these things called the portfolios. We leverage Ezekiel, which talks about different parts of the economy to be able to build our portfolios. And then we give you access to the technology that makes it click button simple. And because we're diversifying, it's much safer. And because I'm not a buy and holder, it's much safer than a lot of the other investment options out there. So David, how? How do we do it? Well, it comes down to this thing called risk tolerance. And we have several different programs available. Now, our friends, if they want to know more, they can, they can actually schedule an appointment with one of our advisors. And you know what, David, I, I think now's a good time. Would you go ahead and pull up that poll question for me, please? Pull up the poll question. Absolutely. And as I continue on, I want you to just have an opportunity that if you would like for one of our representatives, somebody like me or David or Jenny or one of our other investment advisory representatives to tell you more about AMPT and how we can help you with your long-term portfolios, all you got to do is click on this button. And here's what this button is going to do. It's going to give you access for one of our teammates to reach out to you directly and answer your questions from a financial advisor's perspective. What I've discovered, David, part of Tradeway, having someone to ask these questions, getting access to a financial advisor is really difficult. Finding someone that you can actually like pick up the phone and schedule a meeting with to ask your questions, unless you've got a lot of zeros behind your name, typically that is not going to happen. Friends, if you've got some questions, you want to know how we can help and what your specific situation is, how we may advise you, schedule an appointment with one of our advisors. And then you can begin to start to make the decision, is this a good fit for you and your family? All right, so as we continue on, I encourage you to go ahead and click the button. Um, for me, the different risk tolerances and the programs is a big part of how we do what we do. It's the technology that makes this possible. At step one, we call this out. What enables you to become a trader is technology. Here at AMPT, can I tell you what enables you to not just be a buy and holder? It's the same answer, it's technology. We've got access to technology. Why would we not leverage it and do something different? Have you looked at the market lately? The, the NASDAQ is down 27% year to date. D David, 27% I, I, year to date. That's a big number. Well, we've not been participating in this 27% decline as a part of the AMPT program. So if you're looking for a financial advisor who's not afraid to make those hard calls, we don't always get it right. That low-carb trading is definitely a part of our philosophy. 
but we have not participated in this 27% decline. And it underscores my last point. We at AMPT, our programs are designed to help you to protect your assets because we believe that those 49% declines is devastating to your portfolio. They happen every three, five, seven-ish years. Why would we not leverage the technology in a trader's mindset to do something different? So how can Tradeway help with your long-term investing? It's AMPT. It's all about what we do, how we do it, and why we do it is to help protect you and your family. You want to know more? All you got to do, click that button. One of our people will be back in contact with you. If you're watching this webinar after the fact and you didn't get a chance to click the buttons, you can participate as well. You can email us at amp at tradeway.com, A-M-P-T at tradeway.com, or go out to tradeway.com forward slash amp, and you can schedule an appointment to talk with one of our advisors. Our heart at Tradeway, we want to help you to protect the assets that God has given to you, the nest eggs that has been a, a gift to you and your family. We want to be able to help you to do this thing called investing differently than the way that the world teaches. And if that sounds like a program you want to know more about, we would love to be able to spend some time with you personally. Okay. Well, David, we've, uh, we've covered the content and I, I wanted to get this done pretty quickly so our friends could have a chance for some Q&A. Are there some questions out there that we need to cover? Hey, Ben, we've got a good one here from Mark. He's asking, what about index funds? Do we look at using index funds at all? You know, it's an interesting question. We leverage ETFs that are aligned to specific sectors of the economy, not the entire index. Do all parts of the economy operate in equally is all parts of the economy growing and shrinking at the same rate? No. So what we want to do is we actually leverage a diversified portfolio across different sectors of the economy. And what we do is we create a methodology in which our team tries to figure out which sectors of the economy are probably going to do better in this next quarter as opposed to last quarter. If we just do an investment in an index, kind of waters down that capability. So we're trying to blend some aggressiveness by being involved in specific sectors with different weightings. And it's a huge part of what we do with managing a portfolio. We'd suggest that's probably what you need to do if you're gonna manage your own portfolio as well. What sectors of the economy are probably gonna do better than others in this upcoming cycle? Which ones are weak and probably gonna see greater declines? Be less invested in those. It's a big part of what we do. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Another question that came up, um, what is the cost of participating in the AMP service? Oh, man, that, that's a leading one, David. We actually have a webinar. Uh, it's, it's called the Introduction to AMP, where we cover this extensively. What I will tell you is we have two different types of programs. We have one where it's more of a do-it-yourselfer type thing. That's the AMP Pro, where you are pressing the buttons yourself. Um, that one's got slightly higher upfront fees, but lower long-term costs, right? So you're going to pay us for help over um, uh, to get you started. And then we have a percentage where as you do well, we do well as well. That's, that's kind of the way that we do it. Uh, AIM, A-I-M, is the we do it all for you. That's got very low upfront costs with slightly higher annual fees. So you can learn more about that when you want to talk with one of our advisors, or we can send you a replay of the webinar that discusses that in detail. Um, today was more of a topical to get you introduced to how investing is different than short term. And if you want our help with the long term, that's where our AMP program comes in. And I got a great webinar that explains these details and more. All you got to do is ask for a replay. We'd be happy to either invite you to a live session, or you can watch one of the replays to get those questions answered. So. Great question. Thank you very much, uh, Mortara. Great. Thank you, Ben. Uh, another question that came through, um, does Tradeway offer any kind of referral or incentive program for referring others to AMPs? So that is a great question. I will tell you that we do not currently have that, but it's not to say that we won't. That's, that's actually something that has been um, a, a part of David Mitchell's heart is that he wanted to be able to have a methodology to be able to do that. I will tell you it's in our planning to be able to create that sort of a program, but it's not currently a part of the AMP program. 
Um, coming soon to a webinar near you, however, I would definitely say that referrals is a big part of what we want to do. And think about it. You as our friends out there at Tradeway, you know other people that need this information. Why not make it to where there's um, some incentive for you to be able to help your friends and we can help you at the same time. So yeah, that, that will be coming in the future. Awesome. Well, Ben, at the moment, uh, the board is clear. So you've answered all the questions um, for the time being. Perfect. Well, David, I can just tell you that this has been a great opportunity for you and I to, to connect with our friends. I, we've had lots of great questions. I can see based on the poll that there's a lot of people out there that are very interested in, in having some help about how does long-term investing work and what can Tradeway do? So if you've clicked on that poll button, you can expect to hear straight back from one of our advisors, hey, when can we schedule some time to talk? Get on the phone with that advisor, get your questions answered, and let's see if, if AMP is a good fit for you and your family. It's not a sales call. It's, it's a consultation. We want to make sure that it's a good fit for you, and we're going to help answer your questions about whether or not this program might be worth you considering. So on behalf of all of Tradeway, on behalf of the AMP organization, can I just say thank you for coming today? Thank you for you know, spending some of your valuable time with us to begin to understand more about how investing and trading is different. And thanks for listening about how we think AMP can truly help to preserve you and your family's assets. We do what we do because we want to help. And if you're looking for somebody who has a mindset of wanting to help you, please engage with us at Tradeway. We'd love to have the honor of being able to help you to preserve the assets that God has given you.